Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branis Slaberec and in this video we're going to learn how to play Revive from Aporta Games. To set the game up, shuffle these five starting tiles and place them face up on the designated spaces on the game board. Then shuffle the remaining 25 area tiles and place them face down on the game board. Then shuffle the large location tiles and randomly place one in each corner of the game board with the random side up. Return the unused large location tiles back to the box. Then these are citizen cards. Shuffle the deck but without these starting citizen cards. And once shuffled, place it face down next to the table and reveal five cards face up. Then shuffle these slot module tokens, create the face down pile and again reveal five tokens face up. Then sort these machine tokens by the color, shuffle each stack separately and from each stack reveal three tokens face up. Then create the stack of these minor artifacts and place the end game tile on top of them. Then place the major artifacts in this area, but only use the artifacts with your player count. So for example, this one would be for the three player game or higher. If we would set up the three player game, these ones for the four player game would not be in the game. Also shuffle these crate tokens and place them face down next to the game board. Then each player takes a player board and one tribe board and place the tribe board with this sun side up you will unlock the moon side during the campaign. You can choose the tribe board randomly or first you can determine the player order and then in the reverse player order players would choose the tribe board. Then place these gray, green and yellow machine track markers in the space number one of the respective tracks. Take one energy token and place it in the center space of the player board one switch token and set it to a green light. These are resource markers, place them in the zero space of each resource track. These progress markers are placed on the spaces on your player board like this and five of them are on your tribe board. Then choose a color and take all the components of one color, place these seven population figures on these designated spaces and these are three large buildings and five small buildings. Then place one of your pawns on the zero space of the points track and another pawn on the starting space of this hibernation track. Finally, take the set of starting citizen cards. They have this letter S on their back and all of them should have the same letter on the front, either A, B, C or D. Shuffle these starting cards and place three of them face up in the active area and three of them face down in this resting space. Then take one artifact card. This is a secret card, don't show it to other players. For the sake of explanation I'll keep it face up in this video. And if you are more familiar with the game, instead of one random card, you can take two cards, keep one and discard the other. And finally, you can play this game as a standard game with a standard rules or you can use this campaign deck. You can start the campaign with your very first game. If you do, flip the card, read the instruction on the other side, it will give you the introduction to the story. The first game will be played using the standard rules, but then at the end of the game, flip this card on the other side and follow the instructions. The campaign will bring some additional changes and new components to the game, but I'm not going to spoil them. And as the very last step, each player will receive some starting resources, randomly determine the starting player and that player will gain one crystal. The second player in the player order would also gain one gear. The third player would also gain a book and the fourth player in the player order would gain one food. With that, we're ready to start. In Revive, each player leads a tribe trying to rebuild the world according to their ideals. During the game, you will explore new lands, new areas. You will build buildings and populate areas with your population figures. The game is played in turns, starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise. 
and on your turn you may either perform up to two actions or you may hibernate. When you perform actions, in addition to those two standard actions, you may also perform any number of reactions. To help keep track of the actions you have taken, you may use these action cubes, because actions may get quite complex towards the end of the game, and you may use these action cubes on your help card. When you take these two actions, you may either take two same actions or any different actions. So, there are five standard actions in the game. With the first one, you may play one card from your active area to one of the action card slots. With this action, you usually gain some resources. With the second action, you may use this switch and gain one resource, or later in the campaign, it may have some additional effects. The third action is explore action which allows you to explore these unexplored areas, meaning you will flip them face up. With the next action, the populate action, you will populate these location spaces, the small ones, and later in the game, the big ones. And with that, you will unlock these special abilities on your tribe board. And the last action is build, which allows you to build large or small buildings. If you cannot perform at least one of those actions or you don't want to perform the actions, you may hibernate, which is some sort of a cleanup of your tribe board and the player board. You will reactivate all the used items, like for example the switch, and you will also move up on this hibernation track. As a free action on your turn, you may at any time convert crystals to any of these three basic resources, you may activate the machines once you unlock them and you will be able to open crates if you have any in your reserve. With some actions you will be able to take this large major artifacts token and the game ends when the last token is taken from the game board. Then you will count your victory points. As you develop your tribe you will unlock these progress tokens and place them on this track on your player board and you will score the number of victory points based on which space you would reach with your progress markers. Then for each population figure you will score victory points shown under that figure. You will also score victory points from these large location tiles if you manage to get there with your population figures. And then you will score the victory points from your artifact card based on the number of artifacts of that color you collect over the course of the game and the condition which is connected to those artifacts. You'll also gain points from the remaining resources, small artifacts and some other items and then the player with the most points is the winner. In this section of the video I'll cover all five standard actions in the game and we will start with playing a card. With this action, you may take one card from your active area and tuck it in one of the card slots, either one of these two on top or these two at the bottom of your player board. If you tuck it in one of your top slots, you gain the benefits shown at the top of the card. Usually the resources here, you gain two books. When you gain resources, move the corresponding resource marker up. When you pay resources, move it down. You may never have more resources than the limit and you may never pay more than you have. If you play the card in one of the lower slots on your player board, take the benefits and effects shown at the bottom of the card. When you play the card into a slot which has these modules, if the module has the same color as the color of the card, you also activate that module. In this example, with these two books, you would also gain one food and one gear. You don't get this crystal because the crystal has the yellow color and this is green card. Some cards have this slot symbol and that allows you to play another card into the same slot. If you do, you may activate all other cards in the same slot if those cards have the same color as the newly played card and obviously you activate all the modules with the same color as the newly played card. You can find the explanation of all these symbols and effects in the game at the end of the rulebook, but let me cover at least the ones on the starting cards. When you gain books, gears or food, gain the corresponding number of resources. 
With this effect you may trade one basic resource for any other basic resource and you may do it three times. Basic resources are food, books and gears. Crystals is a special resource. Crystals may not be used in this transaction. With this action you actually gain that crystal. With this one you get a new module from the display. You may take any of those phase up modules in the display and when you do immediately replenish the display with a new tile from the stack and place that module in any empty space on your card slots. If you place it in this space with this symbol you immediately activate that module so in this case you would gain one crystal. With this symbol you may advance one step on the corresponding machine track. I'm going to explain these machine tracks during the build action. With this symbol you may activate your tribe ability and here you may choose one or the other effect, not both. Now whenever you activate your tribe ability take the leftmost progress marker and place it in the first empty space on this progress track. But you can only do that if you are able to pay the resources shown in the tribe ability. Later in the game when you place all these progress markers on the progress track you may still use your tribe ability. With the second action you may use your unused switch token. When you do move it to the used position and gain one of the basic resources. This may seem like a very simple action but it may be very useful. The switch may not be used again until you put it back to the unused position usually by hibernating. The next action is the explore action. With this action you may explore unexplored areas. So you have to choose one of the face down tiles, let's say this one, then pay the cost for the wrench plus cost for the tile itself and then you can flip it face up. The wrench is the number of spaces you need to cross from your starting position to the unexplored area. If you have no buildings or population figures on the map you count the wrench from the schism space and you only count the number of spaces you need to cross. So from chasm to this unexplored area you have to cross just one space. When you do have the population figure or a building on the map then you always count the wrench from the nearest component. You will never ever count the wrench from the chasm. So in this case if the yellow player would like to explore this tile the wrench would be one two spaces that are in between the nearest piece and the target area because you may never count the wrench through unexplored areas and you may no more count the wrench from the chasm. The cost of the wrench is one foot per space you need to cover and then you have to pay the cost of the target tile. In this example it would be additional three foot. So you would need one, two, three, four, five foot to explore this tile. After that you immediately gain the benefits of the exploration. Here you would gain two points plus one new citizen card. When you gain points move your pawn on this point track and anytime you reach or pass the space with the bonus take that bonus immediately here you would gain one crate. Then to recruit a new citizen you may choose any of the face up cards in the display or the top card of the deck and then when you take the card place it face up in your active area. Then refill the display with a new card from the top of the deck. Then flip the tile face up and you may choose how you're going to rotate that tile. Just for the clarification if the yellow player would like to explore this tile the cost for the wrench would be zero because there is no space between the actual piece of that player and the target tile. Yellow player would only have to pay these three food resources. The next action is the populate action. You can populate the small location spaces, those are these ones, or later in the game the large location space. The process is the same. Choose the location space where you don't have the population figure yet. Other players may have the figures there. Then choose the population figure from your tribe board and the first time you do the populate action it has to be this figure. Then 
Pay the cost shown next to that space, here it's two books. Then pay the cost for the ranch. If the yellow player wants to populate this space, the ranch would be one. So the cost would be one food. And as this icon indicates, you also have to pay one book for each other player who has a population figure on that space. So here we have the blue player. So yellow player has to pay one book to the blue player. So the total cost is one food, plus two books as the cost of the action, plus one book because there is a blue player's population figure there. Then take your population figure and place it on that location space. That unlocks a special ability which you can use for the remainder of the game. And the next time you take the population action, you may take the figure from any space which is connected to any unlocked technology. So, for example, if you would choose this one with the next population action, you would be able to take the figure from this space or this space or even this one because it is connected to unlocked technologies. These large location spaces are populated in the same way as the small location spaces. If you place the population figure on the large location space, you will score victory points at the end of the game based on the condition on that space. One last note, each player may have maximum one population figure on each location space, either small or large. Again, you can find the explanation of these effects in the rulebook, but at least I will cover this one. When you unlock this technology, you unlock additional slot on your player board, which is this slot on the right side. And when you play a card, you may play that card in that slot and rotate the card any way you want. Then you can take the effects from the uncovered part. The last standard action is the build action. With this action you will place these buildings on the map. First, choose any sand space. You may only build on these sand spaces. Let's say we will choose this one. Then, pay it for the wrench. In this case it would be just one space, which is one food. Then pay the cost of the building, it's three gears for the small building and five gears for the large building. And then you can build that building on the map. Then gain the rewards from the adjacent spaces. When you build a building next to these terrain spaces, for each such space move the corresponding machine track marker one space on the corresponding track. So here we had one grey space and two green spaces. Now, when you reach or pass the space which is linked to the reward space on your player board, take the progress marker from that space and place it to the first empty space on the progress track and that unlocks the machine on your player board. Here on the green track, the yellow player unlocked this machine. However, this one is not unlocked yet because it is linked to both green and grey track. That means this space can only be unlocked once this grey marker reaches the space number 7. When you reach the last space, there is no more spaces where you can move to. However, for each additional space you would have to move, gain one resource of the type shown. Here it's food, on the green track it would be books and so on. Now, once unlocked, these spaces, these machine spaces, can be activated by using your energy, which is a free action. When you unlock this special space, this special machine, again, move the progress marker to the progress track, and then take the machine of the corresponding color from the display. You may take any of the face-up tiles and immediately replenish the display with a new tile and place the chosen tile in this machine space. These machines can be activated using the energy as other standard machines. By the way, anytime you take the progress marker and place it on the space on the progress track which shows some reward, take that reward immediately. When your building is adjacent to a crystal which is at the edge of the board, you gain one crystal. And when the building is next to a water space, Take the reward from the water space, but you only take that reward once. Which means if you would build a building adjacent to the same water space, 
you would not gain that reward again. However, if any other player would build their first building adjacent to that water space, that player would also gain that benefit. To build a large building, you have to pay 5 gears, but as this symbol indicates, you gain double the rewards from terrain spaces. So, in this example, the yellow player would move two spaces on the yellow machine track, on the green track, and also they would gain two crystals. However, this water space would still only provide the reward once. Two important notes. First, there can only be maximum one building in each space. And second, if any player explores the area and some terrain spaces or water spaces are now adjacent to the existing buildings, those players gain those rewards immediately, so the blue player would move one space on the green track and the blue player would also gain one energy and the yellow player would also gain one energy. If the yellow player would be like this, then yellow player would gain an energy and move two spaces on the green machine track. So talking about the free actions, there are three types of free actions. You can always convert one crystal into any one basic resource of your choice. Or you can open a crate. When you get a crate, you may keep it face down next to your player board and you may always look at those crates. And at any time on your turn, you may open the crate and gain the benefits shown on those tiles. Keep the open crates somewhere next to your player board. Some game effects may give you some victory points for the number of crates you have. Although I have not mentioned that before, when you gain a crate, you don't have to open it immediately. You may store it next to your player board face down. And the third type of the free action is using the machines on your player board. To do that, you need to spend an energy. Take the energy token, place it on the machine and gain the bonus or the effect of that machine. Such machine may not be activated again until the energy tokens are returned back to the energy store area, which usually happens during the hibernation. Again, you can find the explanation of those machine effects in the rulebook, but with this basic one you can convert any resource into one crystal. With this one when you pay for the range, you pay one foot less, which basically means your range is increased by one and that one range is for free. And with this machine, you can take any card from the slots and place that card in this resting area. When you cannot or don't want to play actions on your turn, you may hibernate. When you do, perform the following steps. Return all the energy from the machines back to your storage area. Take all the cards from your rest area and place them face up in your active area. Then take all the cards from your card slots and place them face down in the resting area now. If you have used the switch token, move it to the unused position and move your pawn to the next space on this hibernation track. Then gain the reward shown next to that space or from any space below. When you move to this fourth space of the hibernation track, you must remove one major artifact from the game board. You may take any of these major artifacts, but you must remove that artifact from the game. One important note, when you hibernate you may not use free actions, however, if you have some unspent energy, at the very start of your turn, you may spend that energy and activate machines, but after that you perform the hibernation, you move the energy back, and then you may no longer use that energy during the hibernation turn. And one additional note, when you reach the last space on the hibernation track and you decide to hibernate again, you don't move your pawn any further, but you may still take the benefit at that space or any other space below. When any player takes the last major artifact from the game board and either by taking it or by removing it from the hibernation track, that player also takes the game end tile and now all other players have one more turn and then the game ends. If during those turns any player would be supposed to take a major artifact, 
those players would take the minor artifact. These are meant to be unlimited, so if you run out, use some substitutes. Now count up all your purple points and move on the points track, however, this time at the end of the game you don't gain these benefits. So first, score this lowest number visible on the progress track, then add all the victory points, purple points, from these unlocked technologies, score the victory points from the large location tiles where you have the population figure, then score the victory points from any endgame machines, 4 points from the endgame tile, 2 points from each minor artifact tile if you have them, 1 point for each 5 remaining resources rounding down, and then points from your artifact card and the number of artifacts. In this example the yellow player would score 1 victory point for each energy marker, but the yellow player would score it twice, so here it would be 4 victory points, then 1 victory point for each uncovered symbol here, that would be 3 victory points multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4 times, so that's 12, and so on. Then the player with the most points is the winner. So that's how you play Revive, if you don't have any questions or comments I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series please subscribe, you can support the channel on the Patreon page, you can also click the thank you button under the video and give us some symbolic support. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell, my name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash